Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and it's it's been a while. It's been quite a while. I'm not gonna lie, uh, about a month, in fact. And as much as I'd love to say that I was off on vacation, having some fun, sitting on a beach, maybe soaking in some sun, uh, unfortunately, that was not the case. Uh, far from it, to be honest. Uh, however. Where we left off uh, about a month ago was that we got all the fairing compound laid up on here. If you haven't seen that video, I will link to that down below in the description. And now with all the fairing down, well, now we know the next step, and that's gonna be one of my favorite things, which is going to be sanding. <laughs> so now, since we're at the fairing stages of this game, there's a couple things you wanna keep in mind here, and the primary one being the, uh, what, what kind of sander you wanna be using. Now, when we're talking about fairing, taking a step back here, the, the whole point of fairing is to get a surface flat, and if there's any curves or radiuses, you, just, you wanna get those just nice and consistent and just, well, lack of better words, you just you want sexy curves, right? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like that? Now, the only way you're gonna get that is by using what's called a longboard, okay? Now, essentially all a longboard is is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It is just a long sanding board. And the, the point being, it's gonna be long enough to span over a certain distance so that when you're actually working it, you're, you're shaving off the high points and you're not really touching the low spots. So you're bringing the highs down, you know, hopefully, if you're lucky, you'll be able to bring those down far enough to where it'll actually become even with the low spots. Doesn't, doesn't always happen, actually, it rarely happens. Uh, eventually you get there, but it's, like I said, it usually takes a few steps. Uh, what you do not want to be using is something like this. Now this is just a standard DA, you know, either a five or a six inch sander. Uh, if you try using this for fairing, all it's going to do, because it's a much smaller footprint, it's just going to follow the contours. You're not going to level or flatten anything. So for, uh, for you know, fairing, this is not what you want for, uh, for fairing. You want to look at a longboard. Now, longboards, they come in a lot of different styles. I mean, you can get them out of, made out of plastic. You can get them a little bit fancier ones like this made out of aluminum that, you know, that are flexible. I, I will say that's one thing you want to look for is a sanding board or a long board that is flexible. Now, in the past, for the last, whatever, 10, 10 years or more, uh, I was too cheap to buy one of these, and, and all I was using then was a, a homemade one. I just took a piece of quarter-inch plywood and screwed a couple handles on it and used some uh, adhesive or like sticky back uh, sandpaper. Boom, done, it worked like a champ. Now, something to keep in mind when you're looking at different long boards is that you, you wanna, there's a certain sweet spot as far as the length. I mean, they come as short as like 12 inches long. Uh, so I've seen some that are five, six feet long, you know, that take two or three people to run these things. Now, obviously, one person trying to run even like a three foot long board, you're gonna beat yourself up. I mean, make no mistake about that, you, you are going to hurt for a long time. <laughs> so what I found to be kind of the sweet spot is like that 22, 24 inch long, you know, just like this. This seems to be about perfect. It's manageable for one person. You can run it for a few hours at a time without killing yourself. Now, using a longboard, is, it's pretty self-explanatory, but there are a couple things that'll help you get through this process a little bit faster and a little bit more efficiently. Uh, the first one being, you know, when you're using the sander, you pretty much want to try and keep it on a, you, you want to try and have as much of the longboard in contact with the surface as much as you can while you're working it. So in this case, uh, looking at the boat, you know, kind of lengthwise, if I'm holding the sander like this, I've got full contact, full length of this. And when I'm sanding, I'm going to get even pressure, you know, from end to end. Now, if I come in and I'm, say I'm working on this radius here, if I hold it like this, well, all that's doing is that's putting a lot of pressure right here through the middle and the ends aren't even touching. So what I'll end up doing then is essentially sanding a flat base in the surface, which is not what we want. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is how you're actually sanding. Uh, so when you're, when you're running this back and forth, you don't wanna, I guess, run in the same path over and over and over. All you're gonna do is you're just gonna sand a groove into the surface. Instead, what I like to do is hold it on a little bit of an angle and then when you're, making your, when you're making your strokes here, come down at an angle. So instead of going straight back and forth, you're always kind of either going up or going down. That way you're covering a much larger area and it's, just, it's gonna get you a, a, a fairer surface quicker. It may not seem like it. I mean, whenever you're standing like this and you're trying to cover a lar as large of an area as possible, it's going to seem like it's going very, very slow, but believe me, you're taking material off. 
Now, for my sanding on this boat, I'm going to be using an electric longboard, just mainly because, well, I'm, I'm old and I'm beat up. <laughs> so I'm going to try and uh, do this as, as easily as possible on my body. So I'm going to be using an electric longboard. Unfortunately, it's only like 12 inches long versus something like this, which is more like 22. Uh, I would probably get better results with this, but a day of using this, I wouldn't be able to lift my arms for the next month. So electric sander it is, and I'm going to be doing all the sanding using 80 grit. So with that said, let's get started. Well, that was fun. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but overall, I will say, it actually, for the first round, yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Now, obviously, it's not perfect, actually far from it. But for a first round, uh, it's about, I'd say, about 90% there. Now, obviously, there's little spots, you know, like, say, right in here, where these are just obvious low spots where I was, when I was trawling it, I kind of screwed it up. These are scraped right down. So, I mean, things like this still need to come back and be touched up. And, well, that's, that's on me. But looking at the hull, uh, kind of overall, specifically in this area, everywhere that you're seeing, you know, bare glass or even the white, uh, is, is where I basically ended up shaving it down to uh, bare fiberglass. Now, where you're seeing green, now that's still the total fare. So that's what that's telling you is that basically these areas, areas like this, these are the high spots. Areas like this and this, well, these were low. And taking a step back, you can see pretty consistently there's a high spot there and there and there, and it just kind of continues on down the length of the hull. So that gives you just a little bit of an idea how wonky this hull actually really was, even though it, it didn't look all that bad, but when you actually start uh, you know, trying to smooth and fair everything out, that's when you see all the, the, the devils in the details, so to speak. So now in the past, I've mentioned that fairing is, is, it, it is a process. It's not something that you, it's not a one and done kind of a thing. So uh, we got through with round one. Now at this point, like I said, I think it looks pretty well. There's still some touch-ups that need to be done. So I'm going to mix up some more of the total fare. And I'm just going to come in and essentially spot fill uh, all the low spots where, well, obviously where it's where I kind of screwed up when I was trawling it out. But anyways, uh, let me mix up some more of the material and get this, uh, get this knocked out.
So when I finished up the sanding last night, I found that there were, there were still maybe a half a dozen spots or so that were obviously low. Uh, so off camera, I just went in and you know, put another skim of the, of the total fare and then sanded that back down this morning. So right now everything is pretty much good to go. And overall, I will say, I mean, it, it looks good. I mean, when you start kind of getting down at eye level and looking at uh, all the different curvatures and lines and everything, uh, right now I would say it, it looks pretty good. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, great, now it's time to get on to uh, the actual painting part, right? No. Unfortunately, uh, remember when I had mentioned, uh, I don't know, a couple of videos ago that, uh, you know, fairing, it, it's a, a process. It's, it's not just kind of like a one and done kind of a thing. Well, this was phase one, and th there's going to be one or two more phases as, as part of this. Now, it, overall, I will say, I mean, at this point, if someone wanted to go through and paint it, uh, it would look okay. I mean, it, it, it would. It, it would look decent. It'd be one of those paint jobs that, uh, how do I put that? Good from afar, but far from good. It'd be kind of one of those things. And if that's something, and if that's something you'd be happy with, well, you know, that's fine. Um, but I want to take this start to finish so that everybody can see the actual steps from, you know, basically where we started, full of cracks and riddles and everything else, uh, up to basically a perfectly fared hull with a, hopefully a mirror paint job. <laughs> And as a little bit of a peek for what's going to be happening next week. Now, when you're looking at this hall, you can see there's red, there's whites, there's multiple different shades of green from the, uh, when we were mixing up the fairing compound. And because there's so much discoloration in here, it makes it really, really difficult to truly see what the, what the condition of the surface actually is. Uh, makes it difficult to see any pinholes. If there are any, you know, say, edges from where I was spreading out the compound, I didn't quite feather off the edges uh, 100%. Uh, being all of a, a hodgepodge color like this, it makes that really, really difficult to see. And in order to make all this easier to see, what I'm going what I'm to be doing next week then is coming through and, and rolling on probably just a single layer of, of primer. Uh, that's going to give the hull a uniform color. It's going to make it very easy to see shadows, any kind of, like I said, little edges that didn't quite get feathered off, and specifically pinholes. Now, Total Fair doesn't really, I, I don't really have any kind of problem with pinholes uh, as opposed to some other, uh, you know, uh, other fairing compounds. Uh, it's really, really good in that respect, but that doesn't mean that there aren't edges when I was laying it up that, you know, maybe I just, I goofed it up when I was laying it, not necessarily with pinholes, but, you know, just obviously low spots that I, you know, I just, I didn't see when I was sanding and, well, they're going to be there. And if they were, and, I, and if I were to actually come through and paint this, well, it would be very, very obvious then. So once you start laying down paint, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you did not do for prep, that's pretty much too late. So with that being a process in and of itself, unfortunately that's going to have to wait until next week. So I think this is a good point to end this uh, phase one right here. So as always, I, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.